Hey guys, um, I know it's been a long time um, and uh, I'm still not set up to be able to do much with you guys. Um, and I have no Uki today, um, just off at work and off also I just don't have space to make that happen. So you're going to have to bear with me as I try to go through uh, the de details around the rear naked choke um, with just me here. And I'm not even going to do the foam roller for today for uh, practice dummy. But, um, so yeah, this is coming as a, a member request. And the first thing that I want to talk about is first, is that when you are trying to go for any submission, remember that the very most important thing is to establish the position, establish it well, so that your opponent doesn't escape from you and that you can actually get to the point where you can actually finish the submission. So the rear naked joke, obviously we're gonna be doing that mostly from the back mount. And the things about the back mount that you wanna have is first of all, you wanna have the uh, over under grip that uh, we commonly refer to as a seat belt grip, which is gonna be going over the shoulder and then under the armpit on the other side. We might go for gable grip, we might do a double grip on uh, an arm, something along those lines so that we have some kind of control. Um, my feet are gonna be between the legs with my ankles not crossed, right? If I cross my ankles, then they're gonna go for a straight ankle lock on me and I'm gonna get submitted when I'm supposed to be do the one doing the submitting, okay? So I wanna, I wanna have my legs over there. And I also, one of the more important things is that I have hip space between me and my opponent. There's two reasons for this. One is that if you were to try to bridge back, having some space between our hips acts kind of as a kickstand so that he can't just buck back. I'm actually kind of planted in there. If our hips are kind of close and connected, he's going to roll back and he might be able to actually start getting his shoulders onto the ground. Um, the other thing is, is that if you're in a street fight or, or self-defense situation and you're in this position, if you have your hips connected, it's going to be easier for him to roll forward and headbutt you. So when I get this position, I'm going to be hugging him to me. I'm going to be gluing my ear to the side of his body, right? I don't want to be hanging out here with my head all over the place because he's going to buck back and break my nose or uh, headbutt me, knock me unconscious, whatever. Um, but by being here, um, I'm actually kind of preventing him from being able to rock back or headbutt me or anything like that. The other thing is that by having my... Uh, hips out, it actually creates some space. So I'm going to be kind of leaned forward. He's going to be leaned back. And what that's going to do is it's going to put my head on a higher level than his. His head's going to be actually closer to like my chin or whatever, whereas mine's going to be above his. And that's going to put me in the better position to get this rear naked choke. Now, the getting the rear naked choke is going to be um, the same to, to an extent, regardless of if you fall over to the side, which is what's going to happen probably nine times out of ten. We teach uh, in jiu-jitsu, we're taught uh, to do the rear naked choke from this seated position a lot of the time, but in reality, when you roll, you're probably going to be falling to one side or the other because, in a way, that's what your opponent wants. If you are still here in this seated position, um, you know, they've got their leg leverage, they can push you back or whatever, which is going to usually roll you onto your side, to be honest with you. Um, but the other thing is that they have a, sometimes a better chance of escape if they go to, to a side. And you're also, in a way, are going to be able to control it a little bit better if you go to a side. And I'll explain that a little bit more. Because one of the things that they can do if you're still in the seated position is that they can do a reverse trip. They can start pulling their heels in and getting their hips further and further down. And then they can get into basically like a guard position if they can get their shoulders between your legs and start to turn around. Um, or come over a leg or, or something along those lines, right? So it's kind of in a way to everybody's advantage if we actually get to our side. Now, traditionally, we want to fall to the side that has the overhooking arm, right? And the reason for that is that one of the key ways that somebody's going to get out of the back mount is they're going to flatten their shoulders onto the ground and they're going to start to turn into you, right? And so if I've got this, on, this arm on the ground, it creates a block so they can get both their shoulders down. That being said, if you know I've got this grip and I fall to this side, I can put my head there to create that same block. And a lot of uh, more advanced, newer players are actually preferring to do that at this point in time for other reasons so they can go for other attacks. So when I fall to the side, I'll, oftentimes I don't want to keep the same foot position with my feet just here on, on inside of the date, right? Um, 
it still kind of works, but the thing is, one of the ways that he's going to escape is that he's going to push my leg down to the ground, and he's going to hop over that so that he can start to turn in much easier. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get my foot all the way up so I create a seat belt across his lap. So I've got a seat belt here, and I've got a seat belt across his lap. This foot, I'm going to put my heel onto his hip. Remember, I want his head further down than mine. Right, so if I if I don't have that there, he can start to work his way up, and then I'm gonna have a much harder time getting this choke. So this little push here, so I'll look, usually hook his hip with and his upper thigh, like if this is his thigh with this leg. I'm gonna hook it over the top, and then I'll just put this one on the on um, his back. You could triangle choke, but he can straight ankle lock you with a, a body triangle if he really wanted to, if he was really good, um, and. But you could do it, right? Um, a lot of people aren't going to go for uh, that straight ankle lock that's, that, that is there. Um, so putting your foot on the hip also keeps this leg more free. And that's going to come into play into the next part of this, right? So when we are setting up any submission from any position, right, um, when we are very, very new in grappling, um, we kind of learn that from the back mount, there's a rear naked choke. You might know that there's an arm bar from there. You might know that there is a kimura from there. You might know if you're going gi, there are lapel chokes from there. Um, you can go into the torture chamber from there. You've got a lot of things that you can be doing. So my advice, and this is kind of, you know, when we're trying to step our game up to be uh, at that higher level where we're actually hitting submissions more often, um, my advice is don't ever go for the, the submission that you want. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but the thing is, and, I, and I've been playing this a lot from side mount, where what I will do is I will start setting up something, and sometimes the thing I'm setting up is complete bullshit, okay? Um, but I'll start setting up something, and then the person's going to be like, uh-oh, he's up to something. He's going to start defending that. So when you get to somebody's back, and you're going for for the rear naked choke. Um, the thing is, is that everybody knows the rear naked choke. Everybody knows the triangle choke. These are the chokes that the Gracies first brought over and brought to the UFC like way, way, way in the very beginning. And people have been defending them for years. And so people are learning earlier and earlier and on in their submission game that, oh shit, this thing is coming up. So I need to defend against it. So once you get to somebody's back, the first thing that goes into everybody's mind is, oh shit, oh shit, bury my neck, protect my neck, oh my god, they're going for my neck. Okay? And if you want to get the rear naked choke, first establish your position to make sure you don't lose it, okay? And the second thing is, don't be interested in their neck at all. Just don't, okay? Um, the thing about that is, is that the more you're hyper-focusing on their neck, the more they're going to buckle down and they're going to really, really make sure that you can't get to their neck, okay? So once I get to this position, right, where I'm on my side, I've, I've got them and they're, they're not going anywhere. I've got a pretty good uh, control over them. I've got the seat belts. I've got my foot on their hip and I've got this, right? They've got two arms protecting their neck. I might have like a dog paddle grip on one of those arms, right? Uh, the two arm one grip or, or a figure four grip or whatever. Um, but I'm on my side and I've got this position established. What I'm going to do now, right? A few things I can do, right? And we've talked about this, I think, in the past, where I might start setting up that rear naked choke. And one of the things that they will do a lot of times is they'll grab the arm that's trying to go for the choke. Um, so this is one of the reasons why you might want to have your head under and have your seatbelt grip with this one going over the shoulder, right? So if I start going for that um, rear naked choke position, um, and I'm controlling the bottom arm, they have to start to defend that, right? You know, you might be very good at blading across the neck in order under the chin to kind of, you know, like an oyster, shuck, 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 right? You might be very, very good at that. Um, and you're trying to slide that arm across, and what they're gonna do instinctively, most of the time, is they're gonna grab that arm. And so I'm gonna keep fighting that. I wanna feel them really, really muscling to stop me from getting that arm across. And once I feel that they're really pulling on that, I'm gonna extend my arm down. I'm gonna go the direction that they want me to go, step over their arm, and then pull my arm back. Now that I'm gonna put my 
top of my shoelaces on the back of their back, and now their arm is trapped. Now what I have here is I've got their chin and this arm that I'm already controlling um, to, fed, to, to fight this uh, rear naked choke. So I can just go back, shuck, 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 set it up and go for it, right? The other thing that I could be doing in order to start to set up this rear naked choke, right? Is, and we'll go back to uh, this one being the one on top, because again, that's gonna be a more common position. Um, you know, I might be working to get that top, top arm away, right? I might uh, start setting up maybe a kimura or something like that. So I get this uh, figure four grip, I can flick my arm over the shoulder and I can start setting up their armor, push them away, right? Um, a lot of things that I could be doing there. So one of the things is that I'm going to be really, really hyper-focused on maybe fucking with their arms as much as possible because I want them to defend the arms. Right? And so if I've got this grip and I'm trying to get one of those arms free, I'm trying to trap it, I'm trying to do things that it's making them feel like the danger is not the choke. The danger is whatever I'm trying to do with their arms. Right? I might be trying to shuck up and get into a torture chamber position, which is basically a reverse triangle, right? So we get one arm pushed away and then I triangle up and then I've got the other arm to do whatever the hell I want with it, right? So um, I'm going to focus on that. So once I do that, like, depending on what I'm trying to do, they might not only start to defend their arms, but they might start letting their chin rise. Right? Because they are no longer concerned about their choke. They're concerned about whatever it is that I'm trying to do with their arms. Um, and if you are like me, right, um, I might put on the body triangle and not necessarily uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but if I'm doing like meeting somebody off of Meat Fighters or something like that, I might use the body triangle, right, and squeeze the fuck out of them, which is something that would be kind of frowned upon in Jiu Jitsu, but uh, in these types of circumstances, I might do that because then people are going to be focused on the fact that I'm squeezing them and that's going to kind of allow them to change their perspective so that I can start having access to that neck. So. That is, in a lot of ways, the most important thing I want you to get out of this lecture is that whatever you're, whatever you're going for, don't go for it. Go for something else that, um, and you know, in a match, if you're in a tournament or you're in, doing anything like that, you might get the thing that you're going for, right? Or get the thing that you're using as a distraction, right? Um, so, you know, they say a lot when you're talking about the different levels of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is that when you are first starting out, what you're going to be getting is a lot of, um, you're probably going to get uh, submissions because you're using muscle. You're probably going to get submissions because you feel like you are tricking or fooling your opponent. Um, and then people are going to tell you it's timing. And I think that that's a little bit deceptive, right? Um, so I think that, you know, once you get to a certain level, what you start to experience is you start to recognize timing that appears, right? But when you get to a much higher level, you create your own timing. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you right here, is that we are creating our own circumstances that allow us to get the submission that we want. But, and this is... Uh, kind of the reason why I teach things and, and my teacher has taught me things in a sequential order where you're going from one submission to the next submission which leads into this submission and I think that's really really great on a basic level to understand that um, you know if I'm in, if I'm playing guard you know I can do a sitting rollover sweep right so I sit up and then I capture an arm and I roll them over and they post so I can't roll them over so I can grab the arm and I can go for the Kimura right the thing about that is, is that if you can get those types of scenarios to work both directions, that's when you're going to start hitting shit for real, right? So if I'm going for the Kimura and then they bury their arm away so I can't trap it, I can, might be able to get the guillotine there, right? And if they go up to defend the guillotine, well now their arm is coming up, they can no longer post, so now I can get the rollover sweep and I might be able to hit the guillotine from out. Um, so. That is a key concept that I really, really want to hammer home here is that when we are going for the rear naked choke, it might not be the rear naked choke that I get. I might get the armbar, I might get the Kimura, I might get any number of things. But 
Um, because I can go back and forth between the different submissions that I want to get, I have a higher per percentage chance of actually getting a submission and probably the submission that I wanted in the first place. So talking about the finish of the rear naked choke. Um, so usually what the side that I'm laying on is usually going to be the side that I have the overhooking grip. It might not be, but regardless, right, whichever arm is over the shoulder, that's the one that's going to go under the chin and I'm going to establish that. I uh, Really, in an ideal circumstance, I want to lock the chin kind of straight forward, the trachea forward, everything right down the center line. Okay, um, if I'm off of that, and a lot of times you'll see this in tournaments where like the forearm didn't get all the way across and they're still working on finishing that choke, people will tap to that. People will pass out to that. It's going to suck for them. <laughs> um, so the most effective way to do the rear naked choke is that you want to hit the carotid arteries that are on either side of the neck. So you have um, this area in the back of your neck. This is the unchokeable area. This is where your spine is. You've got all these uh, muscles right here, your uh, cervical uh, uh, extensors and whatnot. And then you have your sternocleidomastoids here. And then right seated right in here before you get to the bony part of the trachea, that's where your two arteries are. Um, this you can choke back and you can press on the side on the um, on the bony structure there, which is very fragile and you can break it. Um, but that's not the point of the choke because what you're going to do is you're going to close the windpipe and people, could, some people, especially if like, like they're a diver or somebody, uh, endurance athletes or something like that, they might be able to hold their breath for a very long time even when you're crushing their trachea. So, but everybody, when you compress the arteries and restrict the blood flow to the brain, that's, they're going to pass out. Um, the brain needs blood in order to survive. So you want to get them seated so they're here and here, right? Right on the arteries. And so the thing is, is again, one of the first things that people are gonna do when the arm goes across is they're gonna bury their chin. And so the traditional way of finishing a rear naked choke, of puffing out your chest, rolling your shoulders back and getting nice and tall, um, doesn't necessarily work because if people start burying their chins, you're gonna have issues. So I get across. Now I'm gonna grab my own bicep and a lot of times, um, if somebody still has an arm free and I start bringing it out, they're gonna grab that and they're not gonna let me bring it to the front. And then I have to break my, their grip and all that and then I have to figure out how to get there. If I take and I go behind their back and just come up, they don't have the opportunity to grab my arm. I'm just bringing it up behind their back, boom. And I'm grabbing my own bicep here, right? And I want to bring my pinky to the back of their neck. Right? I don't want to be putting my hand on the top of the head. They're going to pull that down and they're going to be able to start breaking apart this rear naked choke. Um, the other thing is that when you put your arm on the top, you're trying to push their head down into um, here. And what's going to do is it's going to deflect pressure from their arteries into their chin. So you're pushing up on their chin. You're, like you're trying to squeeze their head between uh, the two positions. And that's not what we want. What we want is we want to be going into the arteries. So I'm going to be coming back behind and I'm gonna put palm down on my deltoid here, right? So that my pinky is facing them. Some people will go like completely, um, I guess this would be pronated with my hand, uh, and then pushing down like this. Um, I don't like that as much. I, don't, I think the blade works just, just as well. And so once we get to this position, instead of trying to expand and lift, like a lot of people like to pick up and whatnot. Again, if their head's buried, if you start to lift, they can start to push up on the elbow, they can start to get their head out of that position. Um, and you're gonna lose the submission, it's just not gonna work for you. So what I'm gonna do instead, instead of expanding, is I'm gonna collapse, I'm gonna bring my elbows into my sternum. So you see I'm bringing here, and you see what happens when I do that, is that that space starts closing from the sides, and it's still angled back, so if it's angled back and closing in from the sides, you're gonna hit right on those arteries. So we're going here, here, and if you want, you can add a little bit of a chop down. But I'm bringing my own chin into myself, I'm bringing my elbows into my sternum, and I clasp and I have them, and he's going to go out. Um, you don't have to use a lot of muscle when you do a rear naked choke. Um, it only takes, what, three or four pounds of pressure in order to close up those arteries. So all you're doing is you're just dimming the dimmer switch. You don't necessarily want to go, right? You just, you're going to get tight enough, they're going to pass out. So um, that's it. That's that's what I've got to say. I know this was a, a pretty long video to uh, talk about such a basic choke, but there's so many like little details 
that are just as important as the finish. The finish and just doing the choke, you know, it's it's great if you can get there, but if you can't get there, if you can't maintain the position, if people are just completely always escaping from your back mount, um, it's not going to do you any good whatsoever to try to go for this choke. So, set it up, make sure that you have a really, really strong back mount, then start working on distracting them, right, Keep, or, or taking away their ways of defending, like we talked about. Uh, trapping one of their arms behind their back using your foot, um, using body triangles if you want to squeeze to kind of just get them to uh, react to that. Um, you could start setting up bar bars, you could start setting up shoulder locks, um, start going for the, um, the torture chamber position which is in, this, in, in the uh, channel here somewhere. So you can start setting up all those little things. Um, if you're rolling with gi, you might start doing shit with the lapel. Um, if you can't get that second arm, because whatever they're doing with fucking with it or whatever, you can throw your, get on your side and throw your leg over the side and finish with that. Um, I'll show that on another day. But, um, you know, try to set up something else in earnest. Actually go for it. Um, and when you see that opportunity, because they're defending that other thing, go right back to your rear, rear naked choke, and that's when you're going to get it. So you're not really tricking them as you might think that you're doing when you're a white belt um, but what you're doing is you are setting up something else that you absolutely can hit if they don't defend it and when they are defending it and can no longer defend the submission that you want to be going for go back to that submission and lock it on right um, but you have to be smooth about it it's not necessarily about fast it's smooth uh, smooth is fast so the more you practice it, the more you drill it, the smoother you get, the more likely you're going to hit it. Thank you guys for watching. You have a lovely day. Um, I'm going to try to make these a little bit more on the regular. Um, you know, we are <sighs> we're getting so close, I think. <laughs> um, sorry, it's been a six-month hiatus. Um, I'll see you guys soon.